Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Flywoo Venom H20. It's a two inch hex. Six motors, hex, and Flywoo is one of the few companies that are making bind and fly hexes. You might remember this little guy running 40 millimeter props. I believe they called this the Hex Nano Baby. I think that's what that called. Carry a naked GoPro or something like that. Obviously in this particular case, I am using the Beta FPV SMO 4K. First time, tell me what you think of this camera. But other than the camera that doesn't come with it, but you can buy a camera to include with your kit if you choose to. The link in the video description, Flywoo has all sorts of different options for mounts and stuff like that. One thing I don't have is what they're calling the spider web prop guards. And I'll show you that a picture here. And it obviously it has the spines on one side that kind of support the web, so to speak, on the other side. And that should provide you pretty good prop protection, but I can't tell you much about it because I don't have it. Outside of those things, we need to uh, do the rest of the specs, and of course we need to weigh it up, because if you're a sub-250 flyer, it might be important. The six motors are the 1203 4850 kV Pro motors. It's got the Gemfan D51, five bladed props. So we've got a 16x16 flight stack down there with the Goku Hex F745. So it's an F7 processor, it also features a barometer and black box, and has seven complete serial ports. And the ESC is a 13 amp ESC for six motors. Obviously right up here, this is our DJI or Vista air unit light, and it is naked. They have removed the heat sinks and they do not ship those to you. Mine is the Express LRS edition, so I have my little receiver right down there, and the antenna comes right down here. This was shipped from the factory like this. It's glued in right there, it looks like. The camera is the Cadex Polar, which is a 60 frames per second camera. Got a capacitor that's attached to the standoff back here. Battery lead is an XT30, and it's really hard to see, but right down in there is a zip tie to secure that battery lead to the frame, which is always a good idea. We've got these legs here, obviously, so you can bottom mount your battery and it will still sit flat provided your battery isn't too big. These long flat batteries, they all fit just fine. And as the case in Flywoo style, we've always got plenty of LEDs on this little guy. You can see there on the top of the two of those motors. It doesn't sit very well on my little scale, so I'm gonna weigh it up with this piece of cardboard on top, but you can see it's zeroed out. The Venom H20 in the DJI or Vista format is 133 and a quarter grams. I tried it with all these different batteries, but I think I prefer the 450 and the 550, but it doesn't sit flat with this 550, so you have to go with the 520. With the GNB 4S 450, it weighs 185 and a quarter grams. With the GNB 520 4S battery, it weighs 189 and 0.3 grams. With that older GNB that doesn't allow it to sit flat, it weighs 204, almost 205 grams. With the GNB 664S, it weighs 196 and three quarter grams. And we go all the way up to an 850 milliamp 4S GNB battery. It weighs 193 point, well, one grams. So all these different batteries will get you under 250 grams. It comes with a motor direction card, which is pretty important to make sure you get your props on all correctly. Don't get them upside down. Support card, two extra props, four extra zip ties, an extra silicone coated battery strap. You get some extra nylon standoff screws and some nuts. And you do get a Flywoo sticker. We're gonna jump into a sample of the slow cruisy flight, kind of what this is designed for, but don't worry, I got two other, at least samples that I'm gonna show you of a more aggressive flight uh, with an external HD camera as well as uh, without the HD camera. Uh, do note that we have quite a bit of wind. I noticed that as the wind g continued to, you know, you get those gusts, you know, it's, the wind's always not steady depending upon where the quad's at. Maybe houses or trees are protecting it. But you'll see different little bobbles uh, when the wind starts to pick up around the quad or the quad gets into an area that's a little bit more windy. Uh, winds were 12 to 17 miles an hour. Of course, this is in town. Uh, again, trees, houses, things of that nature that are helping to knock down at least some portion of that wind. And as we cruise around, this is kind of its primary function, I think, in its design. And the reason for the hex would be to just be able to more efficiently carry a heavier load. So it's not necessarily designed for faster flight, but faster flight is what I like to do most. So we're going to feature some of that here on the channel. Uh, I don't think we have to watch all of the slow cruisy flight for you to get a good idea of what it's like. Uh, unfortunately, it is a fairly overcast day and you'll see as we get into the backyard, uh, we've got some standing water because we've had lots of almost daily storms that blew in for about 10 days. Uh, so during my first period of time flying this, which was trying to find a nice calm day for the slow cruisy flight, 
and then I did some flights with the faster flights, more aggressive flying with the SMO4K on top, and then I took the SMO4K off, and then I finished up my flights. This flight is with the GNB 450 milliamp battery, and surprisingly, I got three minutes and 44 seconds of total flight time uh, with the HD camera on top. Uh, so of course you could fly a much larger capacity battery and get more flight time if that's what you wanted. I wouldn't go above that 850 though because I don't know if you'll find a battery above 850 that is going to be flat so you can land on those legs and I did find the legs to be durable. I have uh, one pretty dramatic crash I will show you but I think just putting that much load on a two inch prop even with six motors is going to be asking a little bit much. I flew it once on the 850. It's slow cruisy flying only Otherwise, you're hitting the throttle way too hard. Okay, let's move along. Let's move into some of the faster flying. Uh, hopefully, you've gotten enough of this cruisy sample out here in my windy street and uh, around the backyard and whatnot to where you have a good feel for it. Again, this is without those prop guards, so I don't know how those prop guards are going to affect the flight characteristics. This is my faster, more, uh, let's say, aggressive flight in the backyard. No external SMO4K camera on there. So this would be a lighter flight style. And I am flying the GNB 520 milliamp battery. I did weigh that in the initial uh, quick specs that we went through there so you had a good idea of my all up flying weight. And it was hot this day. This particular flight, because this is the last set of my flights that I did as I kind of worked through, stepping through all the different flights. Um, you might notice my props sound a little bit weird. It's because I did have a few tumbles and crashes, so not all six of my props have perfect blades on all of them. All those five blades on each prop, uh, that's a little bit unmanageable. But I thought even with after having a few crashes that we still had pretty good solid steady video in the goggles. This is what you see in the goggles if you buy the DJI or the Air Unit Lite version of this. And uh, you can see a little bit of prop and you see a little bit of that camera protection. Uh, camera protection you see mainly on the left hand side. I did press that on to make sure that I had it fully seated around the camera lens, but unfortunately we still see a touch of it. Uh, but again, that can save us a little bit of pain if we happen to clip something and, and get a little bit of camera protection. And we can see a touch of the prop on the far left just outside of that camera protection. Uh, flying a hex is a little bit different. Um, I've heard some say it does yaw moves differently. I, I haven't really felt that. What I felt was uh, just the weight of a heavier micro. You know, it's not designed around this sort of flight style, but I like to kind of take it through its paces on this channel, and this is my preferred flight style. It's a little bit of a challenge for me, but you can feel it kind of pull you through the turn. So when it comes to making really hard, aggressive turns, it's going to travel a little bit further in the direction you don't want to be going anymore because that's why you turn then you might experience with like say an ultralight micro or something of that nature um, you can see here and hopefully you can tell um, how it handles the turn I'm doing a lot of little turns all along and you should be able to hear me uh, punching the throttle as I get into one of the sharper points in the turns and I do a lot of pirouettes around the pillars on the new uh, uh, area that's being constructed over there on that side of the house behind the garage still does pretty good punch outs all things considered, you know, pretty happy with that. Although I will say that it does something weird when I would punch out from the chimney side of the house to the garage side of the house and there was a fair bit of wind. Almost like the props refused to slow down. It must have been the wind direction. It, and it would propel you down towards the ground. Um, unfortunately, that's not in this flight. So I have to kind of stress that a little bit is that depending upon your wind and if you're doing some sort of dive, you may find that the props speed up. Oh, yep, clip the post there. That's one of those reasons why I didn't want to show this flight. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I somehow saved it, didn't go down, just a little clippage there. Uh, but that's pretty much the end of the flight. As we come in, again, that flight is on the 520 milliamp GNB, and it is three minutes and three seconds. Okay, here is another, again, uh, more aggressive sort of flight, but a much calmer day, and I've got the uh, goggle view down on the lower left-hand corner of the screen, so we are looking at primarily the SMO 4K image here, so you could get another chance to see if that's a camera that you're interested in. It is from uh, Beta FPV. Uh, the Flywheel Venom can come with a uh, GoPro Bones mount. You can get that as an option, or the DJI camera. Um, what's it called? The Action 2, I think it is, the new square uh, camera that uh, DJI has. You can also get it with a naked 
uh, GoPro mount. Um, so they've got all your mounts covered, of course, over there. And if you don't already have goggles, uh, supposedly they have goggles in stock, and you can put together a kit maybe by the uh, radio there as well. But I'll link that down in the video description. You can take a look at all the different options that they have for ordering, uh, as well as the cost of the quad. There was a little hump there at the bottom, so we're, we're towing some extra weight, we're being a little bit more aggressive, and I got a little lower than I wanted to, and then I hit the throttle a little bit harder, and then so I got that little bit of hump instead of coming down nice and flat and smooth. Uh, so unfortunately in a lot of this, in the primary square of the footage, you can see we're looking at the ground an awful lot. Uh, the SMO 4K mount is stationary, it's not adjustable, so I tried to push the primary FPV camera angle up as much as I could in order to kind of press forward with flying it more aggressively with the external HD camera as well, but we're looking at the ground an awful lot. I recognize that even in the FPV camera, we're looking at the ground a lot because I'm trying to push it so that I can give you a good sample of how it flies when you do have an external HD camera, presumably a naked or light HD camera on it, and you're flying it um, in a more aggressive style. That, that provides you some value, say you only have one quad you're going after or you're starting out and you're considering this, you'll know it, that it can fly slower as well as fly faster, at least how I am able to fly it slower and faster. Of course, there are much more talented pilots out there and <laughs> there are people that uh, go faster than I do and, and have, are much smoother on the sticks and also have a, a plethora of tricks in their bag, which I just don't have. I don't do a lot of tricks. I fly right here in the backyard, as most of you know. Uh, oh, that, that reverse, uh, uh, not power loop, but a dive, where I went from the chimney side to the garage side of the house over the new uh, constructed space. Hopefully you heard that. You might want to go back and listen to that. As I got nose down, it seems like the wind direction or something forced the props to spin up, so it actually propelled me down. Uh, so I had to pull out of that much quicker than I was expecting to. Something to notice, because I, I saw that every time, because our wind direction is... Whoa! Yeah. yeah. Holy had a little bit of a close call. That went right over my head. Let's take another look at that from the audio camera. It's sitting actually right in front of me. You're going to see it smack the table and Holy then tumble off the edge and hit the cement down there. This was my most dramatic crash, and I thought I'd give you a third-person perspective Holy on that. And it did start me a lick because I felt it go oh. right over the top of my head. Couldn't have missed me by more than a foot. Thankfully, if you'll note, I disarmed oh. right away. As soon as I get tangled up in the leaves, branches, what have oh. you, I disarm right away. That's something I talk about a lot. Is disarm, disarm, disarm. Oh. Uh, I know five-inch flyers tend to not disarm, but uh, I'm a micro pilot, so I tend to disarm oh. unless I'm really up high. Oh. Pretty good amount of flight footage there. Hopefully you got a full sample of everything that you were looking for. Uh, a couple of things. Yeah, it's fine. Outside of having some props that are probably off pitch a little bit or maybe not quite perfect. It might sound a bit weird and you hopefully noticed that. I wanted to finish my thought about that dive when I go from the chimney side to the garage side, which is where that new construction is going on. It only happened going that way. And you, you know, you, you've got a camera angle that's up here, so you're, you're kind of actually, when you get the camera pointed straight down, you're actually slightly inverted. But when I would do that, the wind or something, it had to have been the wind, because you could hear the prop spin up and it would propel you down. And that's not something I've experienced much. So I can't blame that on a tune or anything like that, because you can do it the other way and it works just fine. Just something to note that if you're out at a new place and you're flying this or something like this and you have some wind, that depending upon the direction, the quad might respond differently. Just kind of something that caught me off guard. Something I didn't mention or cover much in the quick specs, they have these silicone coated uh, battery straps. They look like the cheapo depot ones that I talk about on the channel. Uh, but with that coating that they put on them, they're quite tough and you can actually really kind of hunker down. Still not my preferred kind of battery strap, but it is what is included with the quad. Something else that Flywoo has, and some of you who follow the channel have heard me say it before, they have a really sticky battery mat. So if you're looking for a super sticky battery mat, I've probably had 40 batteries on this thing during the course of my two plus weeks with it and taking batteries on and off. And this thing is still really sticky. Matter of fact, I wonder, and I might have done this in a video, tell me, uh, I'm gonna stick my finger, just my finger, right to this mat, go press it down. Yeah, that mat's pretty sticky. 
So if you're looking for a good battery mat, you might look at the Flywoods. Oh, it's coming off. It's come. I can feel it. Come on. It's starting to. There we go. Finally. So I talked about it at the touch. This is our TPU printed lens protection. It's not unusual to find this stuff. And if you were to center a tree or a branch, this provide you some protection, but it's not going to guarantee. It's not like it's carbon or anything. It's really firm structure out there. Uh, hopefully your camera survives, but you know, that's kind of the best you can do with the ultra wide uh, FPV view that we get out of a lot of our cameras nowadays is, is either to have it seated back and be looking at some carbon or some posts or you do something like this. I was a little bit curious about these. I don't know, you know, what plastics they're made out of, but you know, they survived all my crashes and I didn't show them all, uh, mainly because I think the last crash that I had, you know, after I'd had weaker crashes, that last crash was pretty dramatic and it did result in it falling onto the cement. Of course, it wasn't a high fall, um, but the higher your fall is, you know, the more risk there is to that. Uh, but a nice tidy job here on the build. But one of the things that I noticed I thought was pretty curious, and maybe it's because it's a hex, let me get this strap out of the way, is they only put motor tape or motor wire tape on the downward facing motors. All the others uh, are just kind of freely out there. They don't move around much, but my preference would still be to have a thin strip of tape, just like they did there around there as well just to keep those things down so if you go come tumbling through a tree that that's one less place that a twig might get stuck and make it really difficult to retrieve of course you have <laughs> these other gaps uh, as you look at the frame and its support structure that you know a branch can get in and i think doing these little braces along the edge was a good idea to make sure that these arms stay firm um, as i wiggle it yeah it's not rock hard I didn't think it was impacting the flight, but you know, it's, it's it, they're fairly flexible. Of course, on the channel, we have had far more flexible carbon, uh, but they did use thicker carbon and they've got some nice touches on there. You know, Flywheel likes to use LEDs. So if you're a fan of LEDs, uh, you've got some of the top should be easy to see. Say if you're in a parking garage doing some flying or chase scenes or something should be pretty easy. And I think one of the driving forces at this is trying to develop a small sin whoop. I think that's the primary design focus on something like this. Of course, I don't have the spider web prop protection to show you, unfortunately. I showed you the picture and that's all I've got. So I don't know how well that's constructed. I would presume it's probably made out of the same material that they made these legs on. So uh, it's just something I wish I could cover for you and I could talk about a little bit more, but I just can't at this point. Base. But as you can see, it's all very compact. So doing repairs is not going to be fun. And one of the reasons why I didn't weigh it without the external camera on it is to get that, you have to not only take off the top plate, but you've got to take the Vista or air unit light off the top plate. And then you've got three screws, one in the front, two in the back with nuts on them that you've got to take off. And then of course, you've got to reassemble by reversing all of that. So it's not going to be a quad that you're going to want to work on a whole lot. Of course, whoops are just about as bad, you know, because they're down inside of a frame. you got to pull everything out and work on it there. But um, just something to be aware of that if you're not wanting to have uh, a camera, you know, you don't want to order it with it. Because I think if you do order it with a mount, it, they will assemble that mount on there for you. That's kind of a nice thing if that's what you want. But if it's not your primary driving force... Maybe put in the order notes, you know, don't secure the mount to the frame, please. You know, just send the mount along. And maybe that's standard. I couldn't say. I just know that mine came with this SMO 4K mount. Uh, something to note about the SMO 4K, it's not going to be easy to see, but it's not. I don't know if I have an early edition camera. See how mine has this little nubbin back here for mounting? This mount, I had to take a flat edge screwdriver and... Well, I actually put it in from this side and pried the mount away from the camera as I slid the camera in. So you can see right down in there how it's it's not necessarily a real clean fit, although it fits around this just fine and it fits around the front just fine. That little part down there just wasn't real clean. Uh, of course, they've got a lead out here for us that's probably wired down to a uh, uh, battery voltage. Uh, so make sure that your camera can handle uh, 4S battery voltage as most of these nakeds and whatnot can. They also have uh, battery leads for uh, the battery adapters. But I kind of 
you know, with all this going on, you'd have to be real careful about your routing. It would have to come up, you know, in one of these gaps, like back in here. Uh, so your battery would be on the bottom, and then they have these power adapter leads that go on the balance port, and then you have to route it up to your camera somehow. So that that doesn't seem ideal to me, but I'm sure it can be done. Uh, maybe you route it under here, through the back, underneath the back side of this camera, and then you come up through and you come out this top hole and then underneath and around. Yeah, that's doable, I guess. Something I didn't think about until I started talking myself through it here recording the video. I do hear some people raving about the Flywoo motors from time to time, uh, but take that with a grain of salt. You know, I've, of course, had a number of Flywoo quads through there, and sometimes somebody's just a fan, and they'll always post that they like these particular motors. But when it came to these micro motors, I thought these were particularly smooth, uh, especially when you run them without the props off. Unfortunately, I don't have any video recording of that. Um, so if you're a fan of the Flywoo motors, especially this 1200 series or other motors that Flywoo might have in the micro uh, arena, yeah, leave a comment down below. Let us all know what you think of the motors. Let us know what you think of their flight stacks and their quads. So that's the Flywoo Venom H20 Hexacopter. Hex, oftentimes for short. Made to carry a external HD camera and maybe do that slow cruisy flight. Of course, we did a little bit more of that in here. Let me know what you think of the quad down in the video description, or excuse me, down in the comment section below. And let me know if you've flown a hex before and what other differences you might want to highlight for someone who's looking at a hex. Because I think sometimes, because it's different, that's one of the appealing factors, is that you just have a quad that's a little bit different than most of your other quads, because I think Flywheel might be one of the very few companies making hexacopters, at least micro hexacopters. And right now, I think this is only coming with the Cadex Air Unit Lite, or we oftentimes just say DJI, but it's only coming with this, so there's no analog option there. But they do have various receiver options that you can choose from, Crossfire, FR Sky, Express LRS. So I'll put a link down in the video description to the Flywheel website and any other website that might be carrying it. If you do have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comments section below. I appreciate your time. And thanks for watching.